Okay kiddos, hello. It's a nice day outside for me here today and I'm going to be going outside on an insect hunt which is one of my very favourite things to do. Now it's good to do it at this time of year before it gets too cold because sometimes the insects stop coming out or they might have been washed away by the rain or something which is really sad. So it's good to go out on a day when there's a bit of sun um, and a little bit of rain beforehand can mean that they're kind of out and flying around. So this is how it works. You go to your garden or to a park and you take with you some kind of camera so it might be an actual camera like I'm using right now or it might be an iPad that has a camera or it might be a mobile phone that belongs to your mum or dad so you go outside into the garden and you start looking for insects now you can't do one of those looks where you're just like look 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 dum -de -dum. no I can't find anything straight away you have to look really carefully when you're looking for insects so what I want you to do is to go out into the garden and go to a plant. You can pick any plant you like. And I want you first of all just to have a bit of a browse over the plant to have a look. Can you see anything really obvious? Then you've got to take some time looking under some leaves. So sometimes when you peer underneath you might find little insects hiding on the bottom. You might easily be able to see something like a butterfly fly past but it's pretty hard to get them on video. So I like to look for insects that are keeping a bit more still in my garden. So after this little video that I'm making now, I'm going to post some pictures of things that I've taken in my garden. Some of them were in the summertime and some of them have been just today when I was out there this morning. And I'm going to go again now and have a look for some more things. Now that you've finished your insect hunt, it's time to get out your science journal and we're going to do some scientific drawing of the things that we saw and maybe some writing too if you're one of the older kids. All right, get your journal and we'll get started. So when you do scientific drawings and ideas in a journal, you should always put the date at the top and then a title, which I've done now. I've just called it insect drawing. And I've chosen one of my photographs from my phone that I took today, a little aphids on a leaf. Now, when you do your drawings for science, you need to draw pretty much just what you see. You can't add extra details and things like with a creative drawing that you might do. And on the side, I'm writing things like, I found many aphids on the leaf and they were all different shapes and colors and sizes. And then I pointed to one and said, this one was gray. And then underneath, I'm drawing a picture of what one of the aphids looks like up close because I zoomed in on my photograph. And I'm doing it just a little bit more detail so you can see what the shape of the creatures are. Now after this I had some questions that I was asking myself so I've written those down too. So I was wondering why the aphids were so different in size and colour and why there were so many in one place and also why I could only find them on the bottom of the leaves. It's a really good idea to write down your questions because you might one day be able to do an experiment to find out the answers. And here's a close-up of what my page looked like once I'd finished with it. Okay, welcome to Who Said That? This week I'm going to play you another animal and you've got to figure out what it is. So here's the sound. Remember the rules, you can listen to the sound. Then you've got 10 seconds to guess and tell someone in your family what you think it is and then I'll tell you what the animal was. So here we go. Just get to the right spot. Okay, are you listening?
Once upon a time, in a faraway land made of Lego, lived two minifigures. One was called Danielle. I'm called Danielle. And the other was Sunny. I'm Sunny. It was almost lunchtime, and Sunny was working up an appetite, cooking a chicken drumstick on an open fire. He hummed merrily to himself. <laughs> Danielle was trying to be a hardcore fisherman, catching fish with her bare hands. Why do they keep slipping out of my hands? It's almost like they don't want to be caught. Hey, would you like a drink of lemonade, Danielle? No, thanks. How about water? I've got cold water in the fridge. No, thanks. I'm good. Juice? I've got apple, orange, or apple with orange. Sunny, I don't want a drink, okay? Okay. Not even a milkshake? Danielle had given up fishing and was now eating a leaf off a nearby bush. What are you eating? Herbs. I'm trying to find the perfect herb for our chicken drumstick. No! I can't believe I forgot the secret herbs and spices! Do you want to go explore deep in the dark, scary forest for the perfect secret herbs and spices? It was quickly decided that this was indeed a good plan, and the two set off on their quest to find the perfect secret herbs and spices for their chicken drumstick. Sunny found a herb straight away. I found one! Over here! Come and have a look, Danielle! Come and look! It's green and slimy, but it looks delicious. Sunny! That's gillyweed! I don't think that would go with chicken. Whoa! They have gillyweed in Australia? They continued on their journey. Hey, Danielle, this plant's got anger issues. What are you talking about? It screams every time I try to pull it out of the ground. It's a mandrake, Sunny. Leave it alone. They continued on their journey. Sunny, what are you doing up there? Ah, oh, nothing. I'm just looking at the seaweed in the tree and wondering how it got here and why it's grabbing my foot. I think that might be devil snare sunny why don't you come and walk next to me where i can keep a very close eye on you okay as they walked past the whomping willow the forest became dark and a little more spooky than before this is when their actual science moment began for in front of them in a small clearing in a dense forest lay the actual bone of an actual unknown creature Danielle and Sunny stood pondering what this creature may have been. Danielle wondered if the bone was from a chicken. Hey, maybe that's where your chicken drumstick came from. That's a crazy idea. It's got to be the leg off one of the fish in the creek back there. There were so many things wrong with this idea that Danielle didn't know what to say. For one thing, this bone was nowhere near the creek. Secondly, it didn't look a whole lot like a leg bone. And finally, fish don't usually have legs. After much debating, the pair decided that the bone might be the skull of an animal due to the presence of eye sockets and teeth. With part of the mystery solved, they had only to discover what type of animal it might be from. Sunny was full of ideas. A unicorn? Actually, real animals, Sunny. Oh, uh, dinosaur? They're extinct. Why don't we try and think about all the groups of animals that actually live on Earth and have bones, and then we can work out which animal it might be. Good plan. Animals with bones. Animals with bones. Hmm. Actually, I can't think of any. Finally, the pair came up with a list of five groups of animals that have bones. Birds, reptiles, mammals, fish, and amphibians. What's an amphibian? It's the group that frogs are in. They live half their life in the water and half on land. They lay eggs and are usually pretty slimy. 
But they don't have teeth. No, they don't have teeth. So this can't be an amphibian skull. I guess not. Do birds have teeth? I don't know. Just then, Sunny came up with a plan. Maybe if they could get a ruler, they could find out how big it actually was. This thing looks enormous. Its head is even bigger than mine. Do you think I should go get a ruler so we can measure it? Yeah, good plan. Got it! Let's measure the skull. At this point, the two were stumped. They decided to call on the help of their 430 friends at Whitehorse Primary School. Will Danielle and Sunny be able to discover the identity of this creature before darkness falls? Will their friends at Whitehorse Primary School help them? And what could have happened to their chicken drumstick? Find out in next week's episode of Science in Legoland. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for the messages that have come through your parents and some of you on Google Classroom. It's lovely to hear from you. And I look forward to when we can be back together in the classroom again. You take care. Bye.